everybody, and welcome to today's edition of Barnes Takeout, your daily serving of art from the Barnes Foundation in Philadelphia. I'm Bill Perthes, the Bernard C. Watson Director of Adult Education at the Barnes Foundation, and my colleagues and I are taking some time each day to share some of the objects and paintings that we're particularly interested in in the collection and saying something about them, sharing the, our observations with you. Uh, today, I'm talking not about a painting as I have in the past, but instead about one of the Pennsylvania German chests that are in the collection, one of dozens of chests that are part of the collection. It's the chest that you see here. And here it is, and the ensemble in which it's placed. So this is gallery 13. Uh, and you're, we're facing north. You'll see that the, the chest is part of the the anchor of this ensemble, so the objects in the in the center. And on this ensemble, so the collection of objects uh, on a given wall are called ensembles. You'll see that uh, not only is it the chest, but on the chest are uh, two plates as well as a vase created by Jean Renoir, the son of the painter here, Auguste Renoir, whose paintings. Uh, are above it, uh, the two paintings above it. Also represented on this ensemble are works by uh, Paul Cezanne, Edouard Manet, and Vincent van Gogh, along with other objects, including metalwork and furniture and and irons. But I'm interested in us looking at this Pennsylvania German chest. Uh, and uh, just to clarify why I'm calling it that, it's I know it's the, it's often described as Pennsylvania Dutch, uh, but the the immigrants who made this did not come from uh, the Netherlands, but instead came from Germany. Uh, Dutch came, uh, the term Pennsylvania Dutch comes from a kind of mishearing of Deutsch, which is German for German, Deutschland is Germany. Um, and the Germans, German immigrants made up a large population and a growing population in Pennsylvania, uh, particularly in Philadelphia and Southeast Pennsylvania and Philadelphia and the surrounding counties. Uh, there's an area of Philadelphia, as some of you may know, called Germantown, which was a large settlement of German immigrants. And uh, when the German immigrants came over in the beginning part of the 18th century, uh, and through the 19th and into the 20th century, a large influx of German immigrants. They brought with them uh, both objects as well as design for household objects, perhaps the most common of which is the chest. So this object uh, would likely have been probably the primary piece of furniture, certainly in a given room, um, and perhaps even within a, within a house. Uh, the kinds of uh, things that would have been stored in this chest would have been a, a wide range of things from clothes to linens, uh, other personal items, as well as uh, potentially things that were of some value. You'll notice that on the f face of this chest, there's uh, an opening at the top near the lip of the, uh, of the lid uh, where there's a lock and the center drawer also has a, a lock on it. So valuable things could have been stored in it uh, and then locked for safe keepings. So part of the reason that I chose this chest is, first, it's one of the chests uh, whom the maker of whom we we know, or at least we think we know. It's attributed to John Bieber. And that Bieber, that name sounds familiar. I, I can't quite place where we might know that today, but it's a, a long familiar German name. Um, and not only that, uh, it, this is one of two chests attributed to John Bieber or to the Bieber family. This was a family of craftsmen that worked in Berks and Lehigh County, uh, just north of Philadelphia, where we are. Um, but also that it's a remarkably and elaborately decorated chests, chest. So this chest in terms of its carpenter construction is fairly simple. So it's called a chest over drawers because it is literally that. At the bottom, you'll see that there are three functioning drawers. Uh, above it uh, is a chest with a hinged lid. And in a second, I'm gonna give you a, a peek inside. 
Um, so the construction is fairly simple, but the way that it has been de decorated is really quite, quite elaborate and quite remarkable. Much of the design on the chest would have been created, much of the detail uh, of the design on the chest would have been created with um, a carpenter's compass, sort of like a protractor that would have allowed the the carpenter, the painter, carpenter painter, to uh, create these really elaborate designs on it. Uh, the heart shape that you see flanking the center pillared arch uh, is a design also that's uh, very closely associated with Lehigh and Berks County. It's another way that we can uh, more firmly locate the origin of the chest, even though it's not signed by its maker. Uh, but something we do know about it is the individual for whom it was made, as well as the date that it was made. So on the pillared arch, we see the name of the individual for whom it was made, Michael Fink, F-I-N-K. Uh, and the year 1789, and that also puts us right in the time frame uh, that uh, John Bieber was creating. Bieber's uh, dates were 1763 to 1825. Um, what makes the design on this uh, chest so striking is how complex and elaborate it is. So, for instance, if we look at details such as the the hearts, it's not only the design of the hearts, which is a familiar design, but within that we have these circled medallions and then these pinwheel designs. And each of these pinwheels does each of these designs actually, both the medallion itself as well as the pinwheel design would have been made by way of a, um, a compass or that protractor. So the carpenter painter was very skilled at adapting the very simple technique of a circle or a portion of a circle to create elaborate designs. That's how he would have set out the heart. It's also how he would have set out this chain design that we see running along the top as well as down the side. And if you look at the chain design, notice how uh, care was put so that the portions, the, the half circles of those interweave with, e with each other. So some go on top, some go underneath. You'll notice that as they come, come down from the top, each one comes between the V shape of the bottom one, and that it's not merely a single line, but a double line that gives, it, gives the design some depth. And we see that interest in a double design throughout the, uh, throughout the design on the chest. In addition, not only do we have the linear patterns, but then we have the color patterns. So you'll notice that a sponge technique was used uh, th throughout in fields of both red as well as black, and that adds variety to it. And you'll notice that even within that, the sponge technique is varied. So for instance, the sponge technique that was used on the red field is different from the sponge technique that was used on the black field. So again, sort of compounding the complexity of the decoration. And if we look at the drawer, notice that again, such care in detail was, uh, was taken. So we have the face of the drawer with its complex design on it, but then the drawer it has a molded edge to it, and that the edge of the drawer was painted a contrasting color, the, that the same color that's used on the sponge design on the face of the drawer is used on the uh, face of the chest itself, but in a solid field. So again, these contrasts of color or design, and then little uh, uh, sort of points such as the eased corners that give it uh, a less sort of harsh look. And then the inclusion of these little um, tulip designs in the corners of each of the corners of the drawer, again, adding a added la layer of design and that tulip design um, echoing the design of the tulip in the arched column 
center. I promised I would show you some of the interior. So here, uh, one of our preparators and I worked together to look inside. Uh, you'll see some of the really fine details inside. The top, which is uh, more than 52 inches long and 30 inches deep, is made up of two boards. The board at the top of, of the image here is a, is a remarkably wide board. This is out of this a chest is made out of pine. This is the size of board that would be very difficult to find today, but was quite common uh, back in the 18th century as they were felling still virgin um, pine forests. And you'll notice that um, the way that the those two boards were joined together were with these butterfly joints, these uh, very delicate um, and decorative butterfly joints, and that the the top is hinged to the back with these long strap hinges, and that inside, there's the top of the of the chest. That inside, there's a little box with a hinged lid. And what I like about this picture is you can see on the inside of the top of the chest that scratch, that curved scratch where the lid of the interior box was opened and was usually used to help hold the the top of the chest open so it would with the lid of the interior box open it would support uh, the the top of the of the chest to keep it open so that the individual could get things things in and out of it and that interior box would have been a place where um, sort of small items could have been could have been stored. Going back to the overall chest, one of the things that Barnes, our founder Albert Barnes, particularly appreciated in these these objects were the fact that they were things that were used every day. And the top of the chest, as you saw uh, in the previous image, is fair is well worn so that we see little of the design left and that's something that barnes would have really appreciated that this box this chest rather really shows um, the usefulness the utilitarian nature of the object but that it's an object that was used daily that was an essential part of a household but that had been invested with such remarkable uh, decor decorative uh, designs on its exterior so I hope the next time you come to the Barnes Foundation, you uh, look at the Pennsylvania German chests in the collection. They're sometimes overlooked uh, because of the re remarkable collection of paintings that we have, uh, but it's really an outstanding collection of uh, Pennsylvania German, German chests. So I uh, want to thank you for watching today. As I said at the top, I want to encourage you to subscribe to this, uh, these takeouts to get them in your inbox each weekday. I would also like to encourage you to leave comments below here. We really like to hear from, uh, from our viewers. And I hope you'll watch again uh, in an upcoming episode. Thank you. Take care. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.